Hey guys, welcome back to Boxer Studio. So a while ago I posted this video called Blender 2.8 Katana Sword Tutorial. Um, and in this video I'm basically going to remake it because a lot of you guys really liked it but thought it was really confusing. So I'm going to go to Blender and I have screencast keys turned on. So you can see if I press like Shift A, then I'll show that I'm pressing Shift A over here. And if I pivot around the viewport with the middle mouse button, I'll also show that I'm doing that. So, um, firstly, I'm going to make the handle and the like hand guard thing. So, I'm going to press Shift A and add in a cylinder. And if you're using this for your game, then under this drop down menu, you probably want to uh, keep the vertices at like 32. But if you're not, if you want to like render this out, maybe put it at a hundred. So now um, it'll be more high poly, and the less amount of vertices you have, the more it looks like this, more low poly it is. So I'm gonna increase that to like a hundred, and I'm also going to tab into edit mode. I'm gonna scale it on the z-axis for this handle here. And I'm going to um, click Alt and select this top, all these top vertices, or I can press 3 and select this top face. So um, 2, also I can press 2 and Alt select these vertices around here. 2 is select edges, 1 is select vertices, and 3 is select faces. So I'm going to press 3, select this top face, and I want to uh, make the wrist guard protector thing. So I'm going to press E to extrude it, and now this is like detached from the main mesh. I'm going to press S to scale it. Scale it a bit more. Um, and I'm going to press E and Z to extrude it on the Z axis, which is the up and down axis. Also the Y axis is this green axis, and the X axis is this um, red axis. So if I press GX or GY or GZ, it'll move it on those axes. And I'm just pressing right click to undo it, that. Right click or control Z to undo it if you've already clicked. So, now that we've got this, I'm going to make it a bit thinner actually. Um, so I want to select all these faces by alt selecting the faces. And now I'm going to press S and X. Scale them on the X axis. Just so it's like more handle shaped and less rounded. Okay, now that I have that, I am going to press Shift A and add it in a cube. I'm going to press GZ to move it on the Z axis. I press SX, scale it on the X axis. This is going to be the blade part. Um, so. I'm going to press SY to scale it on the Y axis. SX. I'm just going to have it like this. Now, I'm going to tab into edit mode and press 3. Select this top face. Press GZ to move it on the Z axis. And click when you're like right there, right above the top. Next, I'm going to press 1, actually I'm going to press 3, um, numpad 3, sorry, not just regular 3, to go into the side view. And now over here in this drop down, or it's not actually a drop down, just this thing to the left, <clears throat> I'm going to select the spin tool, and now if I click on it, it'll spin this around this um, 
3D cursor in the middle. So I'm going to undo that. And I want it to spin around like right here so that it'll like curve up like this. What I'm going to do is press shift and right click right about there and then click and drag it like this. And now that doesn't look good at all, but um, <clears throat> instead of just shift clicking to change the, per the cursor position and redo it again and stuff like that, I can just move these arrows around. So I'm going to do that. And I can also, under the spin tab, I can increase the steps to make it more high poly, decrease them, make it more low poly. And then I'm going to put it at like 100. Uh, but if you were doing this for your game, you'd want it at like, I don't know, maybe like 15 or 16. But for a nice render, I'm going to keep it at 100. And then I'm going to decrease the angle to like about 10, I guess. And then I'm just going to move around these arrows until I'm happy with the result. I'm just using the scroll wheel and the shift middle mouse button to to zoom in and out and pan around. Okay, so I think that might be a bit too long. And also you can just drag on this this y-axis with the spin drop down. Drag on the y-axis. The Z axes. Okay, um, so I think I'm happy with this, but um, I'm going to want to click on box select now because that's like the default thing. If you drag your cursor, then I'll box select. Okay, so now I'm gonna press O to turn on proportional editing, and I'm gonna press two, and I'm gonna select this edge over here and I'm gonna move it up on the Z axis. So I'm gonna press G and Z. And you'll notice that all these edges that are within this circle are being moved up. And I can also um, change the size of this circle using the scroll wheel like this. And for this, I'm gonna move it down by pressing GG. And I'm going to turn off proportional editing because I don't need that on. And I'm just going to try to make these edges around the right point. So I guess like that looks good. Also, I'm gonna select this top vertice and press GY to move it backward a little bit. And I'm also gonna press R to rotate it. So it looks like that. And that looks good to me. Um, I'm also just gonna scale it on the Y axis. Or sorry, the X axis. Scale on the X axis. And now we want this whole front face to be very sharp. It's a sword. So, what I'm gonna do is select this top face and control select this bottom face right here. And it to pick the shortest path. We'll say that over here. Um, now I'm gonna press, I'm actually gonna turn off 
proportional editing with the O key. So I'm going to press SX, zero, like that. Now that's very sharp. So I'm going to press one or click up here to go to uh, vertices select and press SX. I'm going to move these in a little bit to make it more smooth. More like rounded point. All right. Now that we've got that, this is looking absolutely terrible. This bottom thing. Um, so I'm going to move that down. I'm going to make it extra long. Make it really stylized. And actually, if you want it like a Nagi Nata, which is like some Japanese weapon, I think, um, then you can move it down really a lot. But I'm just going to keep it as a katana. So I'm just going to keep it like that. Now, I'm going to go to the material properties, click new, new material, and I'm going to tab into edit mode, click on this top face, and shift alt click this bottom face, and shift alt click this as well. So we selected this whole top thing. We're going to add a new material, click new, assign, and we want this to be um, very metallic look like metal basically and um, up here I'm gonna click on this uh, material preview mode so I can actually preview this material and you'll notice that the rest of it looks white but this part looks metallic I'm gonna increase the metallic to one decrease the roughness to like Point one, and all of this is under this uh, material properties tab. So that looks very nice. This also needs to be very metallic-y, and I'm going to decrease the roughness on this as well. And I think I'm actually just going to make it like a little less rough than this. And for this um, handle, I'm going to click on base color and I'm just going to decrease the base color. And um, it's kind of reflective. We don't want any of that. I'm going to decrease the roughness. And, oh, actually, increase the roughness. There, now it's less reflective. Keep the metallic at zero. Everything looks good. Except for it needs to be a little bit darker. And now, um, that is actually it. So if you like this, video please make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one bye